Hey John, this is Mike with Big Daddy RVs. I've got Zane here. Zane who is our walkthrough professional and technician here at Big Daddy's. He's going to show us everything about your camper. And uh, we'll get this video shot out to you as soon as we're done. Alright, so we're going to start off with the oven and stove today. So we'll go ahead and go over the stove top. The way you're going to light this is it's a self-ignition. So you're going to set it over to the flame here. This is going to release gas. You push in the igniter switch here. That's going to light. Let that sit for a second or two. And then you can set your temperature, and we're just going to show you that all three burners are working. Zane, do you have to push that down to, yes. to light, ignite it? Okay. Yep. And then just hold it for a few seconds, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, like you said, it takes a couple seconds sometimes. And so. then the oven, the igniter is built in on the oven itself. So you'll set it over to the flame. You push this in, rotate over. That'll kick on, and I can't really... Let's see if we can get down here. See? It's not started yet, but we're watching it here. Sometimes these take a little bit longer, being so new. they got to burn off that newness a lot. It takes a little bit, so... There's so the... once you set the pilot lights lit, just go ahead and hold it in just for a second, just to make sure it's going to stay lit. So once there we got it lit, set it over to your temperature. Boom. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. See, like what we said, sometimes that takes a bit to get it to go. You know. Uh, now it should do it again, Zane. I just want to. It should. I'll let it see if it's. Yeah. See, once it's burned for a second or two, it'll stay lit. So. But. Thank you on that one, Zane. And then the light for your stove, your stove and oven and your fan is going to be built into the microwave. So your light switch is right here. See it's lighting up. There you go. And then your vent is set right here. You've got your high, low, and then off. Awesome. Your microwave works just like a regular microwave. And it's a convection microwave too, right? So yep. it'll brown biscuits, little pizza, whatever in there. So Awesome. And then your sink got these two tops right here just make sure that when you guys are traveling these tops are in place on the sink i recommend getting some painters tape to hold them down don't yeah. you zane because because you don't want to bounce <laughs> it up when you're pulling I so mean, right now we actually the camper's already been winterized okay so there's no water in the system okay but we've already checked the system yes. right okay yep. yep so the system's already been checked um and you've got two different modes here you can set your faucet to one is just a straight pour and the other one is like a shower or like sprinkler a head. sprayer head yep. yeah gotcha good deal and then next we'll go over your control panel. Alrighty. Your control panel is going to be behind this cabinet right here. So if we open this up, we'll start from the top and work our way down. You've got a vent uh, open and closed, which is right up here. Right there. You can go ahead and open that up. And the switch for the fan is right next to it, isn't it? Yep, and then the on and off switch for the fan is right next to the vent open and close switch. So awesome. on and off, the vent open and close. And then right below it is there's a the light switch for the LED bar over the couch and fridge. And then next to it is the LED light switch for the uh, kitchen. Awesome. And then the lights for the kitchen itself. Awesome. And that is the living room couch LED light, kitchen LED light, and then the main kitchen lights. Yeah, you play with them, you'll figure them out pretty easily. So. And then this is your generators. So we'll go over the generator when we go do the outside portion of the walkthrough. Um, so for your water heater, you've got your gas switch here, and then you've got your electric water heater switch here. And like I said, we've already got the camper winterized, so there's no water in the water heater itself. So we're not going to be able to run these today, but I do want to show you that they are working. Good deal. And then right down to the left of it, this is going to give you a live readout on your battery life, which is currently at full. Your fresh tank capacity, which is at low. 
your black tank which is connected to your toilet is low is on E and then your gray tank is connected to every other faucet or water appliance in the camper besides the toilet so that'd be your shower your and your sinks yeah your sinks and you've got a gray tank too which should be for the rear tank where the bathroom's back there here your lights are here they're all uh, labeled for you you've got your ceiling lights here your DS floodlights on the outside your ODS floodlights on the outside and then your outdoor porch light <clears throat> And then your slide out control for your bed, you have a dual slide in the bedroom. That's for the bed and the bedroom itself. And they're all connected to this one switch right here. Okay. And then if you want to con control just the outermost slide on the bedroom, it's this switch here, but we recommend you just use this one. And then your awning retract and extend button is here. And then the on off lights underneath your awning are right here. Okay. And that's pretty much your control panel. Like I said, the generator, we'll go over the generator. Do the outside Where's the switch for this slide at right here? This slide right here. So the switch for this slide is going to be right here as soon as you walk through the door. This will be the first one that you open. This will give you access to the rest of the camper to get to the control panel. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Zane. And then we'll go ahead and go over the fridge since we're right here. <coughs> so we're going to show you right here. This, this is not a scratch. This is We left the plastic on specifically. We like to let you all take them off. Because we like to keep, if somebody bumps or something, we don't want them scratched. Right. I just want y'all to see that. So, And then this is your fridge, and then your freezer is down here. Awesome. And then to control the settings for your fridge is right here. So you've got your modes, your freezer temp here, which you can set, and your refrigerator temp, or sorry, that's your freezer temp, and then that's your refrigerator temperature. And you've got your lock right here. And right now it's currently at locked, so that's going to help with traveling, but we make sure that you always keep these on as well. Absolutely. Um, so your fridge runs off of uh, 110, but it's converted from 12 volt to 110, so that means you're able to dry camp with your fridge running off of your battery alone, and that requires the camper has an inverter. The inverter switch for this camper is going to be right down here. So that's your remote switch just to turn it on and off yep. so inside the, the camper, so, right? so the way that works is when the camper is unplugged from shore power, which means cord of power running into the camper, this switch will turn on. The switch does not turn on unless the camper is unplugged away from shore power. And this will allow your fridge to run off a 12 volt inverted to 110. And then we'll show you when we go on the outside where your inverter's at, but once that's left on, you shouldn't have to fool with that. You anyways. just remote off all that switch, yeah, turn it off and off from there on. Awesome. And then your breaker box and fuse panel are right here. So your fuse panel is behind this one right here. And then your breaker box is right here, and they're all labeled for you. Behind this panel, when a fuse goes out, a red light will kick on next to it, signifying which fuse has gone out. Okay, that's good to know. <clears throat> I'll let you go through this way, Mike. All right. right. So... Your bathroom works just like a regular bathroom. You've got your water faucet here, your hot and your cold, <coughs> your toilet here, and then your shower here. Now the foot pedal for the toilet is going to be right here. Like I said, we have no water running into the camper, but this is where the switch will be to flush the toilet itself. And then... Is, is there a significant way to flush that? Should you just barely push it, let some water build up a little so bit? So the way you want to do this to flush the material that you know, when you use the bathroom, pretty much you can press the lever about halfway down it'll fill the bowl up with water. Once you've done your business, then go ahead and give it a full flush by pushing it all the way down. Awesome. And then your shower's right here. We've already got antifreeze in the system. Um, it works just like a regular home shower. Awesome, awesome. We'll go through this, this one's got the fan too, don't it? Right here. And then the switches for the, is that the switch on this no, one? No, your switch for your fan is gonna be mainly on the fan itself. Right here. Okay. Okay. And then this is how you this, crank. You crank this one up. open. Okay. That's awesome. Yep. We'll go in here to the bedroom. So your TV for your bedroom is going to be right behind this door right here. So okay. you open this up. There's a little lever right here. Oh, well, oh, you're you're right on. Yeah, there you go. Pull it straight. And that's how your TV comes out. Awesome. And it tilts too, right? Yep. It's a little stiff because it's new. Yeah. So it's going to be very stiff. And you want this kind of rigid anyway because you don't want this bouncing around back behind that, do you? Right, when the camper's traveling, you don't want this to be sliding forward and back. Awesome. All right. Good deal. And then you got the fireplace in here, which it does come with a remote, don't it, Zane? What? This has a remote that comes with it, um, right? I don't think this one does. 
Not this style of fireplace. It might though. We'll double check just to make sure. And then your bed. That storage space underneath. That's a pretty good amount of storage. That's uh all right, we're back in. Back together. All right. Stop. And then through here is going to be where your washer and dryer hookup is. Yep. So your dryer vent is yep. here. We've already cut that and set that for you. It's already done. And then your water hookups are going to be right here. You're hot, you're cold, and then you'll want to take this cap off and run your washer drain hose through here. <clears throat> And you've got your closet in here. Is there, is there lights in the closet? I don't think there. Yep, there's one right here. Okay, good deal. Yep. And then you've got your own AC for the bedroom, and the AC AC switch is right here, and your furnace is connected to this one too. So okay. you've got two ACs. You've got one living room and one in the bedroom, or three. Sorry. You've got one in the living room, one in the bedroom. And then one in the toy hauler part. This one right here in the bedroom runs the furnace. The one in the living room does not run the furnace. It's this one. Okay. Yeah, I know. I just guess, how do you run three ACs on this unit? Well, what makes it run three ACs? I know you can't do it on the generator, but you can do it on shore power. This yeah. what is it what kind of system does this have in it, Zane? Um It's the energy management system, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that 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 with that being entailed there, the energy management system will let you run three ACs off of a 50 amp shore power connection, but it will not do it on an Onan 55 generator to blow your breakers on your generator. So that's just one thing to remember when you're, when you're running three ACs, do not run three ACs on your generator. You can run two, but don't run three. Right, All right? exactly. So, And then um, that's pretty much it for the bedroom. The light switch is here, and then you've got a light switch over the bed. Right awesome, here. awesome, that's cool. And then you got another little for your tiles and stuff, for your bathroom right there. Or you can use it as a pantry, whatever you want to do. All right, Zane. And then your couch, the reclining levers are right here. So you pull that, there's a little lever just tucking the side of the cushion. Awesome, that's cool. All four of them recline, don't they? Yep. You got to switch here for this one, and then this one, and then that one. Awesome, awesome, Zane. Cool, I like that. And then your light switch for right. your lights underneath your couch are here. And then and your then LED, LED illumination there? Yep, it's right here. All right. Um, you got your sound bar right here. So we'll turn this on, it's also a radio. So, whoop, give that second. It takes a on. second, yeah. So and we have a hard time picking stations up underneath this porch. Um, all all metal buildings cause that problem all the time. There's very few stations that let it let yeah. you do it, but what are those? Why does it have A, B, C, D on there? What are those for? So these are your speaker zones. So you've got an A, B, C, and D speaker zone. Um, so it does different parts. You have to play with that to figure out which one's which, right? One so the, this sound bar is only connected to speaker zone A. Your radio in the toy hauler part is connected to your outdoor speakers okay. and your interior speakers back there. So this okay. one is only connected. Through okay. this sound bar right here and then if you want to change from so to change from the regular radio to the dvd player mm -hmm. there's a source button right here right I got now you. it's set to dvd hdmi and that connects it to your cd player right here that's a blu-ray actually i believe isn't it no maybe not it no, says dvd yeah, okay DVD my bad CD. my bad so and that'll give you your sound coming through here it's got USB ports and auxiliary in, and yep. it's Bluetooth compatible too, so you can play music off and your cell phone. And to set that Bluetooth, there's a pair button you hit right here. Just hold that in for a second. And then pair it with your Bluetooth on yep. your cell phone or your tablet or whatever. And then your volume controls, and then change your radio settings right here. So we'll get that back to... Normal. Yep. So that's Bluetooth, TV, and then auxiliary. And then there's radios back again. Yep. And that'll change your station, the up and down arrow will change your volume. Good deal, good deal. Now these are, Summit TV here is a Roku Smart TV. So you do have a Roku app on it, just so you know. You can figure that out. Uh, we don't have access to Roku up here underneath the porch. So right. 
uh, to use it to show you. But so. we did. I did check through some of the channels to show you that your TVs are working. And right. Your, we, your antenna is working, picking up. Well, that's station. that's a pretty stout antenna if it's picking up underneath this porch because yeah. ninety percent of the campers we put under the porch will not pick up a TV antenna with this metal roof. Right. So. And, and then you got a light switch here over the bar. Actually, right, that's, your actually that's your LED on your on your side of your table there. So these lights I mean, over the bar are just push button in the center of them. Push button in the center of them, yes. Awesome, and then you got you know plugs on each side for any accessories. Uh, you got a plug over there for a coffee pot, you know. Just just and then there's a plug here if you had something else to plug into. Since we're right here, I'm gonna go over this too. Okay. So this is your LPCO2 sensor. So what this will do is it'll detect that there's a propane or gas leak inside the camper. This will start beeping and cycling off, warning you, hey, there's something wrong. There's a and right here is a trash can port. A trash can port right here? <coughs> yep. Awesome. You got your trash can. We, we, you got some goodies in there. I think you uh, worked those out with Tommy. And then there's your access to pull your trash out right there. Yep. So. All right. All right. We'll go well, we got the off. garage and then the outside. So your controls for your... Uh, toy hauler part are going to be here to lower and raise the bed. It's this switch here. Yeah, I know they're slow. <laughs> yeah. The motors are just a little slow on these. That's cool. Yep, and then to lower this section right here, uh, it's relatively easy. There's four pins on these tracks that you'll pull out. There's one here, one over there, and then, and then there's two on the back side. Awesome. Pretty much pull those pins, you'll raise this bed up it'll lift it off the track and it'll lower back down and there's a catch spot in here that'll catch itself automatically and right. that'll give you the option to have two beds and then if you want to turn this into a couch so what we'll do is we'll drop this down it's got that yeah i see it's got this top on it yeah that's that's the cushion for the top one sometimes at the factory they get lazy and just throw it the easiest place possible. <laughs> I'm being honest. So. Right. It just yeah. Here, I'll hold it while you show them here. So you'll pull this lever out. This will go up. Oops, maybe. Make sure it's probably on the other side. I didn't think it had one. I thought it just one side. Does it have two? Oh, okay. Some of the other brands, I guess it's probably the the lower end brands only have one on one side to see I think so maybe that's what so I, I pull, what I did is I pulled these two levers out that unlocks, that unlocks it. this piece unless you turn it into a couch awesome and then you can lower them down there's legs underneath for the bed to support it yep and it's it, it's the legs underneath are good to support for like if you got it in the bench setting too. yeah exactly and then there, there's actually supports underneath nope they don't do them on these never mind and then we'll just flip that back over Lock her back in. Lock that back in place. Flip the mattress back down, and you're good to go. Yep. And then you've got your awning controls for the toy hauler section on the back, and I believe we're over here yeah. on the side as well. So you got two awning controls here. Yep. One's for one, one's for the other. And then your light switches on the outside are here. There's a door light, and then there's an LED strip on we'll the We'll show back. you those when we go outside. Yep. So and then the interior your, lights. Yeah. And, and then, then the, you, push buttons again right so here. So those two are push buttons and then your loft light is right here. Oh, You've awesome. Got loft that's up here. Awesome. And then your bathroom is here. It works the same way as the bathroom up front. Um, if you needed a little bit more room for your toy in the back, yep, you can There's a pin here. pop you, this hinge yep. down. And since we've got this ladder right here, we'll roll all the way out. And then it locks into this steel bar right here. Yep. Okay, and then this snap, this piece snap, snaps and keeps the do door held up against here, and it's got the rubber boot there to keep, so it doesn't mess up your door. Yep. So that'll give you just a little bit more room. Awesome. And then your thermostat for your AC back here is back here. So, and then it's got this little storage drawer underneath the, the little booth that's up front. It's just a little drawer to put knickknacks, whatever in. And I believe that this. That is, is your screen in ports for your patio. Yeah. All right. And then you've got a, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there is dovetail storage underneath here. There is a storage compartment that goes across the width between the frame here. Yep. So. And then you've got ven ventilations, which is right above Mike's head right there. And you got one here. And then he's got one that's down there to yep, the right. Down there on this side. You can see it shining a little bit there. Yep. Sure. So. 
And that's pretty much it for the toy hauler section. All right. Um, it's time to do the outside. Yep. Okay, so we'll pretty much do a whole lap around. All right. So you've got the exhaust vent for your furnace. Just make sure if you've got any kids or any plastic tables, you don't set it directly underneath this. Right. And we put the vents on for you like you asked. Yep, you've got a spray port here, and this will allow you to, well, it's in one of the compartments. It's There's a, a blue co coiled hose yeah. that plugs you right into that. You to spray your boots off or anything like that. Right. Um, you can hook it up right through here. And this is the door to, to, to your garage section. The yeah, LED lighting on your. It's here. The LED strips that was connected to the switch inside is right there. You're also uh, set up for a backup camera. You're prepped for a backup. Camera That's the there. Furion uh, backup camera that's prepped for there. So to drop this door, there's two latches on each side. There's a latch here, and there's a latch here. And these doors aren't heavy at all. I mean, this is a pretty much a one-man job that you can do. Yeah, it's it's spring loaded, so it takes a lot of the weight off for you. So you pop these up. Turn them over. It's vapor locked, I bet. Sometimes they get vapor locked. Yep, it's coming. Cables are on it, so you're good to go. Um. This is set up for the porch setup, where it's at right now, and I believe, Mike, I'm not wrong, in this up position, it's what, 12, is it 1,000 or 1,250? Uh, I think it's, it's right here on the deal. Uh, that's 1,000 pounds per wheel contact, and a maximum total ramp load of 2,500 pounds. I think it's, it's, uh, when used as a patio, the max weight capacity is 1,800 pounds. I thought it was 15, but it's 18, so... Right. But to pretty much drop these down, what you'll do is you'll lift up, take this pin, pull it over. Pulls right out. And Simple pulls as right that. Out. And you Simple. do both sides and it'll set right down. Yeah. You just unlatch the, uh, they're held with Velcro up here. Unlatch them, pull them out, lock them in, lock it in, and then your steps hook up the rest. It's pretty simple. If you got any questions, John, when you, when you get here, just give me a call. I can walk you through it. Go ahead and shut this back. Alrighty. And it just reversed the process for shutting it back. It's easy. Real easy. You just want to make sure these cables are pushed in. And what I like to do is I like to take them and put them behind that right there myself. And boom, you're good to go. Get your ladder here. This ladder is ready for 300 pounds. Um, your roof is walk ready. We check out the roof. Everything's fine up top. Um, so drop this down, there's these two, two pins here, you'll pull, pull this down, and then there's a spot that'll be created once you pull it down to lock, lock your pin back in. Yep. And then your power cord is built into the camper itself. So when you're ready to pack up from whatever lot you're camping on, there's a switch here. You hit the retract, to guide this in. Yeah, you want to guide it in because you want it going in pretty, pretty evenly or yep. you won't get it all the way in. Exactly, and when you're ready to release it, it just pulls right back out, no, no hassle. And here you've got a spray nozzle in case you guys are, you know, got your golf cart runs on gas or four by four, four wheeler. He meant pump hose. Yeah, <laughs> not spray nozzle. But <laughs> pump hose. It's all right, man. And so this is going to be connected to the tank with the pump hose. This is going to be connected to the tank with your generator. So left tank generator, yeah. right, right tank, tank. Just, or right. right tank is going to be your. Stand. And if you run out of fuel here, you can just take that pump, pump her in right, right over here, yep. pump her right in. So and then your fuel pump switch, right here. Well, that is going to be right here. We got to get some fuel in it, test the generator later, but we'll make sure it's running before it leaves. Uh, actually, we've got enough fuel in it to test it. Oh, okay, so. good, awesome, good, yeah. okay. And then for your wastewater holding tank, for your back portion of your camper, for your toilet hauler, which is your bathroom sink and your toilet, your two levers are going to be right here. Yep, there they are. Yep. So like I said, we've already got this thing winterized. There's antifreeze sitting in the system, so there's no water in it. We've already done all that. You're pretty much good to go. All you have to do is when you hook up, run water to it, 
flush antifreeze out and you're ready to go. Awesome. Now you get your slide topper here on this one. And your slide topper on your on your further out one. We like I said, there wasn't enough room to put it up here on that one. Uh it is what it is. I, I have no control over the way they designed this, unfortunately. Right. Um, so. <laughs> There's your. Your valves for your uh, bathroom, sink, shower, and kitchen are going to be right here. here. There's three of them there. Yep. So one's going to be a galley. Which is going to be. Your gray. Your gray probably be your galley. So there's, there's a gray one. The middle is black and, and then there's two. another gray two. Gray two is the far right one. That one's gonna be your galley tank. So if you guys are camping for an extended period of time, you can leave that gray two open because usually that's what fills up the fastest. It's gonna be your galley tank we're using your sink quite often. So you can leave that valve open. Just make sure that you leave the black valve closed and you have enough water in your gray tank that when you open the black valve, so in your black rinse. tank, you can rinse out the line with your gray tank. Awesome. And then that's your Anderson hitch right there. It's in your storage there. Yep, and it's about 40 pounds. It's not too heavy. I put it in there myself. So you shouldn't have an issue getting it out. So that spray port on the other side, there's when we first hose. walk out the door, there's your hose for you it. You just got to get a, a sprayer head for it. Yep. So. And then your water hookups are going to be right here. So there's also a spray port here. And then you've got your cable, cable satellite hookups right here. Awesome. So to switch from your tank to your city water is going to be this valve here, and they're all labeled for you. So you get awesome. dry camping, your tank, your city, your water, and then your water hose is going to connect into here. Yep. So if you want to fill your tank up, set it to dry camping, fill the tank up. If you, or I'm sorry, leave it to tank, fill the tank up. Once your fresh tank is full, switch over to dry camping. This switch right here is your water pump switch. You can either hit it here or inside, and that'll cycle, cycle water if you're dry camping. Most people usually hardly ever use their fresh tank or their water pump because usually they're at lots. So generally, when you're going to be at a lot, use your city water. And then, does this one have a built-in pressure regulator? Or is it? No. So you'll need an external water pressure regulator, usually between 45 and 55 PSI. Um, and that's just going to make sure, because you don't know what the city's water pressure is or the lot's water pressure is running at. So you'll need a water pressure regulator to hook into. Just leave this valve at city if you're going to be on the lot. And then you've got a black tank flush valve here. So the way that works is you're going to hook your water hose to this hookup right here. Turn your water on. Any kind of additives or conditioners you want to add to the black tank, you add it through the toilet by holding the valve open, dropping them in there by the prescribed amount on the bottle. And what those conditioners do is it helps break up material that builds over time. Once your black tank is full by checking that monitor panel on the inside that we showed earlier, once it's full, come out here, pull your black tank valve open, let that run with the water hose running to it for about five minutes or so and do that however many times until you feel like that you've flushed your tank thoroughly enough. Um, to prevent any kind of material building over time, usually every two or three camps, when you go camping, use, I recommend you do it when you come back from camping just about every time. But if you can't, try to make do it every two or three times at least. Awesome. And that's how you perform a black tank flush. <clears throat> and I'll scoot this over so he can see. Well, I'll just pull this out so he can see the amount of storage space he's working with. Pretty good size box. So, you got some storage space. Yeah, you've got three points of entry for your storage space as well. <coughs> and then over here, you're running two 30 pound tanks that we have filled up for you. Um, and there's one on this side, there's one on the other side. Opposite side, exact opposite side. Right here oh, is your auto leveling system. We'll go over that. Um, once we get through the rest of the walkthrough, we'll come back and do this. It takes about five minutes for it to complete. Um, but I'll show you how to set that up and what you'll need to do. Your docking lights are right here. Docking lights. Yep, and the switch for that is right above your auto leveling system. 
That's more, that's more access to your storage. Yep, they do this drop frame system, so you have more storage all the way through, which is pretty cool. And then your generator is here now, so you're not sitting here stuck having to hold this door open. I figured out a little trick. You let this door down, lift this door up, ah, in front of it. Cool. You don't have to sit there and hold it. So he's just going to start it from out here because we want you to be able to hear it. You can't hear it real well and on the you, inside. You so. can start it from the inside. You shouldn't have to come out here once everything's set. Right. You won't have to come out here and do it this way, but this is just the way I like to do it. So we've got our breaker set to on, and that'll just stay on. That's going to let your transfer kick over. We don't want them on on when we're uh, when we're plugged into shore power, though, do we? Um, we always usually leave them on, but oh, okay. we can kick them off. I've not been okay. told otherwise. Okay. You got your prime set right here, so we'll hold this down. We'll let that prime just for, I'm just going to hold it down for about 30 seconds to a minute, just make sure we get a really good prime. Um, and like I said, this switch is on the inside as well. So once we've got that prime, we're going to let it off, hit the start switch. <laughs> When you start your generator up and you're not hooked to shore power if you're dry camping, it usually takes about a minute to a minute and 30 seconds for everything on the inside for the transfer switch to engage and kick everything over to the generator power. But like Mike said, you don't want to run three ACs on your generator, you just want to run your two um, because like I said, you'll start kicking breakers on the generator. on the generator itself. So just keep that in mind when you're running your generator. Yeah, and if you uh, do that and you can't figure out how to get it, everything working again, and you take it to a dealership, they're probably going to charge you a couple hundred dollars just to flip a breaker switch. Uh, it wasn't one of my customers that happened to, but another salesman here, his customer did the same thing, tried to run all three on the generator, blew the breakers, he took it into a dealership, they charged him like $180 just to flip the breakers back for him. So just be mindful of that. So you shouldn't have to be in this compartment very often. Um, but it's good to know just because you're going to be owning this camper, it's good to know what you've got. So right here is going to be your batteries or right behind, underneath this panel. you got two batteries, two 12 volt deep cycles. Yep. You've got your hydraulic fluid here, your inverter switch is right here. And right now we have the battery disconnect set for the inverter switch set to off. So if you need to run your fridge and your dry camping, come out here, push this in, cycle it over to on. Your inverter is now going to be on and you use that inverter switch underneath the countertop by the sink to kick your fridge on but we'll leave that off for now we recommend that you just leave that off unless you need to use it this unit also has a juice pack slash solar panel whatever you want to call it it's basically trickle charges your battery that's your monitor for all that stuff uh, but same thing here you can run it charge your batteries up flip the switch there yep and we'll leave that off for you for right now so if you get to where you're going and you're trying to dry camp and you realize that your inverter or your fridge isn't working, it's not because your inverter doesn't work, come out here and try that first. Yep. And then like Mike said, except for a juice pack, you got a, your connection's gonna be, your hookup's gonna be right here. That's an additional solar panel, but there is a there is a solar panel on the roof on this system. Standard from the factory. We'll open this up, you have your other 30 pound tank. And then it's going to be hard to see because there's not a light switch in here, but you've got a propane regulator switch right here. Um, so there's a little lever that's on top of this. So when we're pointed this way, we're running off of this tank we're looking at right now. When we're pointed this way, we're running off the tank on the opposite side. And here, let me see this. There's a little green gauge right here. This is showing that your pressure is good on the other side, which means your tank is full. And if we cycle it over, this tank isn't empty. We just have the valve turned off on it right now. So we'll cycle that back over. There you go. That's your walkthrough, John. If you got any questions, feel free to call me, Zane, or even Tim. He, uh, but uh, we'll get you took care of. Uh, I'm going to shoot you this video here shortly as soon as I get it uh, edited and uploaded. Uh, we look. Thank you for your business. Uh, we'll try to get your delivered out Saturday morning to you like you needed. Thank you, sir.